to a, a, a what hopefully is going to be a brief rant um i'm I, I needed to jump on here and say something we've had over the last uh, 48 hours 72 hours this um situation with matt hancock and the um lockdown files from the sunday telegraph or, or the telegraph forgetting about whether or not the journalist involved has done the right thing there appears to be some question on that. I mean, I mean, it's beyond me. I think it's clearly in the public interest that she released this information. And, you know, I've been harping on for some time about the mediocrity of our politicians and their inability to fulfil their briefs, really. Um, and I think that Hancock and his despicable, despicable uh, colleagues in government have shown us the complete and utter contempt with which they feel uh, the general public, they, they treat the general public with a complete and utter contempt. Um, their lack of intelligence, their amazing egos, and the fact that these people will use psychological warfare, and it is warfare, on their own people is staggering. We did mention some time ago on the radio show that, you know, I felt that politicians were mediocre, and they have been for the last God knows how many years. And their egos get in the way. How can it be how can it be that we elect these people to govern us? How can it be we let these people get away with what they're doing? And we just get on with our lives. Well, it's obvious, isn't it? It's a created chaos. That's what's going on. We've got a war in Ukraine that, okay, where's that ever going to go? Yeah, why are we why are we spending money sending out weapons? Why are more people dying? Why do you see Ben Wallace, the defense, walking around smiling? And uh, who are these damn people? There is a lack of moral fibre. There is a lack of compassion, and it's really is quite staggering. Over the last, I guess, since COVID. Things just seem to have spiraling out of control. Now, we know that, you know, I, I don't know how much we know, how much you know about crisis theories or all the other stuff that goes with that. But is there a crisis or is this all planned? That's, that's my worrying thing. And they let these idiots, these idiots by the idiots, I mean British politicians, from all persuasions, because let's not forget that during this COVID, which turned, well, let's not even go there, but during COVID, Politicians of all persuasions, very few was, was saying this is wrong. Very few would stand up. And the ones that did stand up were vilified. Called conspiracy theorists. It's staggering. <laughs> it's absolutely staggering that we allow these people to get away with it. And it's not as though... Even come an election time in a couple of years, who have we got to vote for? Starmer? That's assuming we're not at war with China because of all the nonsense that's going on there. Because of, again, people's greed, because of people's ambitions. Yeah, but China may not be the greatest regime in the entire world. I accept that. And there are a load of countries where there's not the greatest regime in the world. You've only got to look at Turkey and Turkey and NATO members. But we let them in. Yeah, it's not great. But look at what goes on there. And more importantly, look what goes on in this country. With this psychological warfare that's been going on. 
that this government felt was necessary to do on its population. With Mr. Flip Flop Boris Johnson, who I understand they called the shopping trolley because he keeps bashing into aisles, he can't make up his mind what he wants to do. The moral fibre of society has broken down. And I think it swings into two camps, doesn't it? You've got those, oh, well, the world's really great, it's fantastic, it's marvellous. You know, fluffy animals rule. Or the reality that we're being sold an absolute lemon. But they keep us in a state of fear, don't they? There may be a war. I read the other day that they're even... The, the, the word conscription came up for the young of this country. Conscription. Whether that's to bolster Ukraine or if when NATO eventually decide to go in, although they're, they're practically almost there, aren't they? Or when we have a war with China. What is going on? What is going on? Can't there be some worldwide peace talk? Does the average person need this stress? They've got to worry about the gas prices going up. Gas prices going up where companies are making large profits. I, I, I'm not a clever man, but that to me just doesn't make sense. War machines, you know, people building, they're not doing it for nothing, they're being paid. I, I I think I'm not a spirit. I'm not I'm not a, a religious man. Spiritual maybe, religious not. I believe there is a bigger power than us. And I think since the demise of religion, and let's be fair, it's gone pretty much down here, wasn't it? Since everybody, you know, I guess partly brought on by science, partly on by maybe drug, sex, and rock and roll. I don't know, but religion's gone down the hill, and we can see why. Sex abuse scandals. Um, you know, thri frightening people. Those are hell and we're all going to burn forever. And so, you know, but go, go get a life, these damn bloody people. What's wrong with them? We're lacking some moral fibre. But then again, I say that. The murder of Tony Blair. Yeah, yeah, millions of Iraqis still die every day because of this. And Bush. He decided, I believe I'm right in saying that after all this, he, he turned to uh, the Catholic faith. You know, oh, please forgive me. I forgive my sins and all this. Oh, and no, I'm all right now. So now I can go out and cause a load more other rubbish. <laughs> Where is your moral fibre? Where is your love for humanity? It's ego driven yet again. I don't know who's pulling the strings in this world. I, I have no idea. But I know that we are the majority. The people are the majority. Should we not be standing up and saying, you know, this has to stop? Governments and the way they act and the way they've acted and probably the way they're still acting has to stop. And I know they say today's news is tomorrow's chip paper. For those of you who are probably under the age of 60 won't realise, but many years ago, chips used to be wrapped up in newspaper. What a joy. I'm not sure it added to the flavour, but anyway. Where did it go wrong? That's what I'm not... I don't, I don't understand where it went wrong. Um, we've got people in this country that can't afford to feed themselves. Can't afford to heat their homes. Yet, we spend money on preparing for wars in the 21st century. Yeah, I know there's always going to be bad people around, you know. Well, I say I know. I mean, why? They're all driven by religion fundamentally. They're all religious fundamentalists or complete lunatics that are greedy. Don't all these religions need to get together? Don't everybody, these, these heads of these religions or whatever it may be, need to get together and say, you've got to stop. Now, I've not read the news where the Church of England has said the war in Ukraine is appalling and we need to talk about this. I've not seen any religious leader talk about it. I think it's, it's kind of depressing. Um, 
And then you see the rise, there's been a massive rise in mental health issues, anxieties. And I can understand that. You know, and then you've got mental health charities crying out for people to help them. Probably crying out for money so they can get people in to help. People with real issues walking around in society, not knowing what to do or where to go or who to talk to. Yeah, I, I count myself very fortunate and blessed that my family, I come from a fairly loving, well, a fairly, a loving family, a fairly loving family, a loving family, a very supportive wife. I'm very lucky. Um, but that's all very well and good. And perhaps within that support, within that comfort, um, I should be doing more. You know, I should be getting out there and bashing on doors or, I don't know, writing, writing letters, you know. I think the world has gone completely insane. Um, I'm not knocking, you know, everybody and anyone. I mean, we've all got our issues and most of the people that do important jobs where there are issues, the NHS, the police, um, that all seems to have gone wrong. Yeah, the, even, you know, the, is it is it because we live in this woke society now, this this world where if you say something that's slightly offensive, you get cancelled? Well, do you know what? I'm fed up with that as well. If I say something, I'm not doing it from hatred. I'm not doing it from a position of hatred. I can say what I want to say. There is something called free speech. And I know we've spoke about this before. Um, is there free speech? Maybe for another day. But I want to be able to say what I want to say without offending someone. At least have a discussion. Yeah, you know, if I sat here and said, well, I don't think Putin's completely to blame for the war in Ukraine. Oh, oh. As it happens, I don't. There's a lot of factors that have gone into that. A lot of, lot of, lot of different issues. Beyond my knowledge, but what I can, what I've managed to find out puts me on the page of, you know, the bear being prodded and the bears kicked back. And it's still wrong, you shouldn't invade a country. But why aren't we on a plane talking about it? Why aren't world leaders getting together? Why aren't religious leaders getting together? What is religion anyway? Yeah, what is it? What is it? You know, what are we doing? But yeah. I don't mean to knock anyone that is religious. Obviously, you have a faith, and to have a faith, I think it's a it's a great thing. But you have to, it's we spoke about this, this idea of groupthink. And if you're in a, if you're a Christ, if you're a practicing Christian, whatever it may be, and you're in that group, anyone that gives an alternative view outside of that group is seen as your enemy. Instead of sitting down and talking about it and looking at the facts and, you know, belief isn't knowing, is it? Knowing is knowing, but belief isn't knowing. But anyway, I think it's time that the world leaders drew back and said, right, you know what? There's a war going on. We need to sort that out. We need to work with some people. We need to find out, you know, is there a way to resolve this? We need to look at food, the energy crisis that's going on in the world. And the government in this country needs to start looking after its people. Don't send in the 77th Brigade to start looking at our emails and listening to us. Who are we frightened of? We're being sold a lemon. Apparently, we've got this COVID inquiry um, where I heard on a radio programme that said that we know it's going to take at least five years, possibly 10 years, because contracts have been given out to lawyers and to IT technicians for five years while this goes on. Apparently in Sweden, it's been over and done in like, I don't know, 36 months. And we won't go into conclusions because that's not what I'm on here talking about. Please, please, politicians, please get out of your egos and start doing some good. Because come the time when Mr Sunak says, oh, we need to conscript because we haven't got an army anymore, we're going to send troops into... You know, I heard, I heard um, George Galloway talking about that, the Oxford Union debate, I think. Um, 
are you prepared to fight for Sunak? I'm not. I'm too old anyway. But I don't want my kids going out fighting for, for what? Let's pour this back from the brink. Let's sit down and let's damn well talk about this. Everybody tells, oh, you know, the best thing to do is to talk. You know, you need to talk. You need talking. You need to talk. You need to listen. You need to talk. You need to talk. No, it's all right for us. But don't give it to politicians. Oh, no, 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 no. You know. I think someone said war is part of diplomacy. Yeah, what a load of crap. Anyway. We're going to find out, I guess, over the next coming weeks, months, what else Matt Hancock has said and what else these government damn people think about us. I do hope someone is able to get up and bust this bubble that seems to be in Westminster. And you know what? We don't even need intelligent people in government thinking about it. We need people that have got some honesty, who are prepared to be transparent, and are not looking at the next job. When these people go into politics, they're looking for the next job. And I'm not saying all of you, or all politicians. But there was an eerie silence, wasn't there, during COVID? An eerie silence from both sides of the debate. And you know what? They both got it wrong. There's a whole load of things that will unravel regarding COVID in the next coming 12 months. A government, you know, we, we had a situation. I'm unvaccinated. We, both my wife and I decided we're not going to take the vaccine. I did loads of research and I came to the conclusion I shouldn't take this vaccine. I got COVID. It wasn't pleasant. But as Boris Johnson pointed out in one of these texts you've probably got more danger of being over 65 and falling downstairs than you have of catching COVID and dying from it and as he said we don't legislate against people not to use stairs I think I got it around the right way something's gone fundamentally wrong we need honesty we need transparency and we need ego shifted away from the job of being a politician. I said some time ago that the government's job is there to safeguard, protect. Wow, have they missed that one by a long, long, long way. Anyway, I leave you with that thought and uh, peace and love and uh, we'll catch up soon. Thanks very much. Yeah.